Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to have the opportunity to give you a look inside of a reel that's uh, relatively new on the market. This is the Pen Wrath. It's the 8,000 size reel. It's a very big reel at a relatively inexpensive price. So we'll call this Pen's entry reel into the uh, saltwater uh, surf and uh, heavy casting market. This one holds approximately um, 50 pound braid, 475 yards. It's braid ready. Interestingly enough, I don't mono be on this side, I guess. 200 and, uh, 340 yards of 20 pound mono. It does have that little rubber strip in the middle, which would help to prevent some uh, braid uh, slip from time to time. The 8000 is the biggest size. The reel, I believe, is retailing for around $50. $49.99 is uh, the general price you can get for it. This is a three ball bearing reel. It has a, a relatively big size gear ratio. It's 5.3 to 1, so on the larger reels, pretty significant. It has a max drag of 25 pounds. And one of the downsides of this reel is that it weighs 30 and 30 and a half ounces, so almost two pounds. That's a pretty heavy reel. So nice reel, smooth operator. If you were to compare this to generations past, you would say this would be a Penn Silver as opposed to the Penn Spin Fisher. Well, let's take it apart. Let's uh, let's have a look inside, see what you're getting for your money, and uh, overall uh, have an, make an opinion about it. So I like the, the cosmetics of it. It's a nice look. It's got the, uh, I believe this is full metal bodied. It's a uh, nice black uh, shadow kind of black uh, dulled. I like that. The spool, I believe, is a metal spool. We'll take a look inside. We'll see what's giving us the, the 25 pounds of max drag. We'll take a look at the drag washers and the like as well. So if you'd like to uh, these types of videos, and certainly if you want to see more, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, uh, please hit the notification button. And that notification button will uh, tell you when I'm posting videos. Sometimes I'm doing product reviews like this. Sometimes I'm working on reels. Uh, oftentimes there'll be vintage reels, but every now and then new. Well, you can hear that's, an, that's a metal spool. And let's, uh, let's take a look at those drag washers while we have the spool open. To get to the drag washers, you want to remove that little clip. Hold on to it. It's a spring. It will shoot if you don't pay attention to it. And then let's pull out what we have here. So this is using the older technology. You wonder why some reels uh, have uh, a different price point than others. Well, these have felt washers for the drag washers. And there's nothing wrong with felt washers, but in the days of um, the higher uh, composites and the carbon techs and things like that, well, felt washers are uh, a little bit less expensive, so it's going to take uh, save a couple of dollars when you're putting a reel together. Felt washers need to stay lubricated, and I recommend oil when you're, uh, when you're doing felt washers. And for the most part, you got the, the 25 pounds of drag because you have a, uh, a 10 drag system here, which has got a lot more area to it, and that's how max drag is calculated. It's calculated out on the, the area of the, uh, the reel. All right, well, these felt washers, they alternate. They alternate felt washer and then metal washer, and the metal washers alternate between a keyed washer, which has got the rectangular hole and the eared washers which have the two points with the round center hole. So you just need to make sure that as you put these back you're alternating them. That's kind of what I'm doing here. Now we'll go with the, the eared washer goes next. So a lot of max drag. So if you're finding that you're, you're fighting fish that are doing a lot of running and that your drags are either not performing up to par, maybe they're slipping, uh, maybe they're just not holding. Well, I believe these drag washers can be swapped out for Penn's HT100 series. I'd have to check that, but most of the time those washers can be swapped out for the higher version. And uh, for an example, we're talking about saving money. Well, an HT100 drag washer is $1.50 retail. And if you uh, if you've got five of them in there, well, now you're at eight or nine dollars, and the whole reel here is selling for forty-nine. So you can see why they've uh, they've chosen the uh, the lesser uh, material there. All right, I've, it's a three-ball bearing system. 
I've removed the screw cap which is holding the handle in. Now I'll remove the handle. I'm going to put these in, off to the side in a parts tray. And uh, let's go underneath here and see what's in the case. So we know it's three ball bearings. A typical three ball bearing reel is going to have a ball bearing on the pinion gear which is up here. And it's going to have a uh, bearing on each side of the main gear. And a, a lot of times I get asked what's the right number of ball bearings in a reel. Well, we're seeing ball bearing reels there that are advertising 10, 12 ball bearings. I, I was on a, working on a Quantum the other day. It had three ball bearings on the spool, for gosh sakes. Uh, so what's the right number? I think you can get by with three. Three being the, the one on the main pinion gear and then the one on each side of the gear shift. I think that's that's kind of the minimum. That's kind of the price to play poker in my mind. Some of the older reels have less, of course, but the newer ones with the price of ball bearings coming down the way they have, um, I think the three is, is ideal there. That's going to take the most stress, one on each side of the main gear and one on the pinion gear. Those would be the, the stress points. Those will be the ones that you're going to want to get the fluid performance from. Well, while I'm doing this, if you have a question on this reel or any reel, whether it's a technical question or maybe a buying conversation or maybe you just want to know a little bit more about the reel, if you leave that in the comment section, I'll be happy to provide you with the answer if I know it. And if I don't know it, I'll try and point you to uh, where you can find that information. My channel works on all kinds of reels. The idea here is do it yourself. It's kind of showing you how to do it so you can do it and give your reels a second chance. All right, so what did we do? We removed the bump guard. That's the shield there. We found that there's a screw under that shield. And then there were three other screws. I've put them into a little parts uh, container off camera. And that parts container just keeps them in a single place where I can get them later. Well, here's a surprise. And the first surprise I have is that's not a bearing. That's a bushing. So we have a bushing on this side. So what, what makes me wonder is where are the bearings? It says three. And I'll be darned if, if we wind up having a, a pinion gear bearing, a line guide bearing, and, and can, calling the ant to reverse the bearing. How do you like that? So mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. While well, we were talking about how do you save save money. Well, if a bearing is three or four dollars, and this little guy is 20 cents, that's how you, you save money in a reel. All right, this one has a uh, crosswind block underneath. It's got two screws that are holding the axle shaft on. So we're just going to continue taking a look at this. We'll pull these two out just because I want to see the other side of the main gear. I, I think we, we don't have to take the rotor out up top to expose the anti-reverse bearing. We know that's there. But we also know that you don't have the typical setup of a pen stack. I'll just leave those two on the table for a moment. I'm going to remove this. Remove the main gear. Sure enough, we have a bushing on this side as well. Well, now that's just got my curiosity up now. So let's go up top and uh, we're going to take this off and just see how they've configured that anti-reverse because normally on a pen battle or a pen fierce or a pen pursuit you're going to find that they have two bearings one on each side of the anti-reverse gear and that's certainly not happening here so let's see what we can find out I'm going to go for a deep socket because I have a lip here and that lip you're not going to be able to clear that lip with a open end wrench. So why am I tearing this reel apart? Well, no particular reason. A friend gave me this reel. He was missing some parts. I guess it came back as a store return because somebody took the handle off or something. He gave it to me and I said, well, I'll go get you your pieces to make the reel work. And if you don't mind, I'd like to do the, in the investigation here as well. And he said, fine. So we have a dog system here. This is a a backup dog system. It's got the ridges underneath the rotor and on this side you have the plastic 
dog that will move in and out. And this little um, piece is a eccentric, which is going to pull it in while it's spinning and push it away when it's not. You have a plastic uh, assembly here with a little hole. And then we have this collar that has the spring on the collar right there. And when you go to reinstall this, if you have your reel apart, make sure that you have that spring angle pointing up. And that it goes into the hole like this before you set that back on. We're just going to put that in a parts tray for now. And again, the Curiosity's kind of got me here, and I hope it's got you too. Let's find out what's in the stack then. So we're gonna, I'm sure we're going to have a clutch, and I'm just assuming that we're not going to have much more. As I mentioned, the, the typical pen stack inside of this would have a um, would have a burring on top, burring on the bottom, and an anti-reverse clutch in the middle. I just don't, I can't believe that it would be there if we've got bushings on the side of this. So let's go ahead and pull that out. When you take this off, notice you have a flat side here. This, this piece is not symmetrical. There's a flat side, and that flat side faces your anti-reverse dog. Uh, let's pull it out and see what we got. Oh, well, we do have the two burring, uh, burrings. So, okay. So your three burrings are up top here. This is a typical setup for the pen reel. Uh, you have a burring. You have an anti-reverse clutch. You have a collar. You have another bearing, and inside you have a little um, sleeve that's going to be the uh, collar for that anti-reverse bearing, that sleeve right there. All right, well, questions answered. Kind of a surprise. I didn't expect to see that. After uh, the two bushings, I kind of for sure thought that uh, the other ones would probably be nominal types of bushings. I guess I was wrong. But the stack reassembled, we're just going to put that back in after having shown that to you. And then we can put the collar back on. Remember what we said, the flat side goes to the back by that dog. Again, this is for anybody who has this reel that happens to be looking at servicing it now. So let's talk a little bit about those bushings then. Those bushings probably are a, uh, a standard size. And I imagine it doesn't take much to uh, go out and get those as burrings. And uh, if you do that, well, you've just kind of upgraded your reel and uh, probably improved the performance of this quite dramatically, given that uh, plastic bushings are prone to wear. And in a lot of cases, that'll develop slop in the handle, and then uh, eventually it'll develop wear on the gears themselves. So a price point reel like this is generally going to be targeted at an occasional angler. It's not going to be somebody who's going to use it as a daily driver. It's somebody who's going to go out on the weekends maybe a few times over the summer perhaps or the fishing season, whatever that fishing season is. And then it's going to go into storage for a while. I Sometimes I call them cabin reels. They'll sit in a cabin or they'll sit on the back of a boat and when somebody comes along that uh, wants to go fishing with the cabin's owner or the, uh, the boat owner, if you will, while well, that one comes out of storage and it becomes the, uh, the reel of the day, if you will. And that's, just, that's perfectly fine. Remember what we said, we've got that little hook inside that carrier. I'm going to flip this over now, load that onto the case, make sure that that little point stays there, and we can put the Little shim washer on. We'll come up top, put the rotor back on. So we found out you, you do have high max drag. We did talk about the ability to go ahead and to upgrade those drags. And now we're seeing that you have the ability to change over from your bushings to your bearings. So if you want to take this out as a starter reel, and say, okay, look, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be fishing that much. I don't want to make an investment of, say, $120 in a pen battle. 
but I do want to make sure that I have a, a nice reel that uh, I can have be, be confident in the fishing with. Let's start with this one. That's not a bad idea. You got the, the significant uh, play up top on the posts. You don't have a very good bottom end of this reel, but what you can do is you can say, all right, now I now that I know I like it, let me go swap out those bearings. You don't have to invest in a whole, uh, a whole new reel there. You can simply swap out the bearings. And then if you find that you're tearing up the drag washers, well, then you can go ahead and change those over as well. At least from what I'm seeing, there's nothing, nothing fancy or unusual about these that would say you couldn't do that. By the way, that's a tip for older reels as well. If you have a reel that's got bushings in it and you want to smooth out the performance of it, you want to hot rod the reel, if you will, go ahead and do that. So we're, uh, we're putting these pieces back together now. We're going to put the, the two screws that hold that cross wind block to the axle shaft. The cross wind gear behind there, that big cross wind gear, that's forcing the, the spool to go up and down. And the cross wind block is, is the transition piece. It's the piece that's enabling you to take the, the uh, piece from the, or the movement from the oscillation gear behind there and move it to pushing the axle up. All right, we're in on those, almost in on those. And give it a spin before we close it up. You'll see how it's working. It's going to move up and down nicely. Uh, looks like I just need to do a little bit more tightening on those screws. I left them a little proud, and you don't want them catching the reel. Just tighten those up. Now, remember what we had? We had a little uh, little shim that goes on your main gear, a bushing case, metal case. You can see that. That's contributing to the weight as well. You said if there's a if there's a downside to this, it's that this reel weighs almost two pounds. You can imagine if you're out on the surf and you're fishing bait, you want to make one long cast over that first breaker and then just kind of sit in your chair and uh, wait for a strike. That's one thing. If you're working a plug, trying to catch striped bass or something, and uh, you're working that with I don't know, 20, 30 casts an hour, well, your arm's going to get tired with a, uh, a reel like this. On the positive side, metal cases do not flex as much as graphite cases. So if you do land that big fish, you're less prone to have the reel kind of buckle on you and uh, bend an axle shaft or uh, some of the other consequences of the uh, graphite play in a reel. All right, well, just two more pieces. We'll put it all back together again. I don't want to give this reel back to my buddy uh, if it's not working properly. And we haven't done anything to it other than take it apart and put it together, but you'd be surprised how many questions I get when somebody's taking it apart and put, put it back together again and it doesn't work the way they would like it to work. Okay, we got that one more small screw here. So overall, what's my opinion of it? I like it. For $50, it's hard to get anything these days that uh, looks like it would stand up. This one, there's nothing wrong with it that I can see in terms of the technologies behind it. I don't like the bushings, but again, I understand the price compromises that they made in order to bring you a reel at that $50 price point. I like the idea in my mind anyway that this can be upgraded with the drags and the, to put the bearings on those um, uh, side posts on the main gear. And I like the idea that uh, you've got a big reel here for a value price that uh, this probably should be supported for a long time by the Penn Corporation and known for having the support and the parts and that available should a reel fail. And uh, overall, I think, I think that this is a good entry in the market. And I would encourage you, if you're looking for a, uh, an entry-level saltwater type 8,000 size spin fishing reel, give this one a try. And again, if you, if you find yourself in a situation where maybe you want Pen Fierce or Pen Battle performance, go ahead and throw the bearings in there and change over the... Uh, 
the drag washers. But other than that, the Penrath 8000, nice reel. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. To all of those that are first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you've been doing to keep us safe during the pandemic. And to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.